Hi! After uploading my last video about using STMAPs inside After Effects, I've got a few people asking me, why would we even need them? So to make it more clear, I decided to give you a short example of the situation when they actually might become handy. Let's have a look. So here's our shot where the girl is picking up a ring and let's say our task for this shot is to put maybe some kind of texture on this wall or some sign or a symbol. So it looks like a very common task at first. But the problem with this shot is that it was filmed on 8mm fisheye lens and it has huge amount of distortion. Usually, when distortion is not so heavy, we may leave it as it is and we won't have any problems. But in this example, because our wall is hitting the edge of the frame, we have to do the process called undistortion. In ideal world, we would have a lens distortion grid. There is already a great tutorial about lens grids on Hugo's desk channel, so if you wanna learn more, go check it out, links will be below. But for this specific shot, we don't have such a grid. What are we gonna do? We will open my favorite tool, Mocha Pro. Here inside Mocha Pro there is a lens tab, where you can hit locate lines button and Mocha will try to detect lines that it thinks should be straight. You can play around with minimum line length to get rid of the smallest one and clear your view. Now we only need to mark the lines that really should appear straight. Hit N on your keyboard whenever you want to start selecting a new line. It's better to draw lines somewhere closer to the edge of the frame. The process is really fast and won't take more than 5 minutes. After you select enough lines, it's time to calibrate. I'm working with fisheye lens, so I selected two parameters in drop-down menu in calibration settings. For most regular lenses, one parameter will work fine. Hit calibrate and Mocha will do its magic. Now, if we start to draw some shapes, you can see that edges of the surface tool now become to look curved. That means our lens solving process went perfectly. Next, we need to transfer that undistortion data to our compositing software. Inside the Lens tab, hit Export Lens Data and you'll see few different options. If you are an After Effects user, there is a choice to use Mocha Lens plugin. And that's a great and easy to use tool, but I prefer to work with distortion maps, because originally I started to make this project in Nuke. And also, it's much more versatile in case we would need to transfer project between different softwares. Here we can choose either we want to render map for distortion or for undistortion. I choose to render both, we will need that later. Now we can import that map in your comp software, for me that's Nuke, undistort your footage and work as usual. If you work in After Effects, go check my previous tutorial. So now when footage looks much more straight, we can start working on roto and tracking. I won't be covering that in details today, because that's not today's topic. Let's say we finished our tracking and this is the result we got. Usually I'm checking how good or how bad my tracking is with simple grid. So how we would get that fisheye look back now? Remember that another STMAP we rendered earlier? We just need to import it in our project and apply the data to the grid as the very last effect. Remember, even if I'm doing all this in Nuke, the principles stay the same in any software. Now we can turn off the undistortion on the footage and this is how it's look like. Grid sticks to wall perfectly and matches the distortion of the fisheye. The source material stays untouched. Now we would be able to replace that grid with anything we want. And here is when the key point comes in. As I said previously, I originally started to work on the shot in Nuke, but at the end of the day I needed to deliver that as an After Effects project, so another artist can continue work on that, and how I would be able to transfer that to After Effects without needing to rebuild it from the start. The solution is very simple. We just need to replace that grid with another new STMAP, and after all the transformations and deformations, render that as a sequence which later can be opened inside After Effects. So we literally need to apply STMAP on another STMAP. This way, this sequence will carry on information both about transformation and distortion at the same time. And this is how I was able to get two complete editable projects in two different softwares by only rendering one layer. And again, this is only an example when the technique was handy for me. The FX is all about problem solving and it's great to know the tools and understand how they work. By the way, this shot is from short film directed by camera girl Helena, so if you would like to see the film, go subscribe to her channel, links will be below. And that's all for today, if you still have any questions, feel free to ask them in comments below, I would be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching and see you next time!